Hello YouTube family, this is Ravi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So we are back on the series Learn Service Now Scripting from Scratch and we have completed two videos on this. First video will be the basics of ServiceNow and second video how we can start writing a script in the server side. So in the previous videos we have seen, if you notice, uh, server side of a scripting where we know we have to do all the database operations, create, update, read and delete. And we have given example of fixed script. And then this is the first requirement which we have done it. So let's go back and this was the one where we have left in the previous class. So what is glide record? Again, I'm repeating glide record. If you divide this word into two half, let me zoom it for you. If you divide this word into two half, glide means move. Record means record. Record means your data in your table. Now move to the record on incident table. It's nothing but select star from incident table. Where category is software. This is one of the way which we have seen in last class. Now in, this, in the same requirement, if I ask you if the category is software or category is hardware, how you will do that? So in that case, guys, always remember there's other options available in ServiceNow where you can leverage the ServiceNow features to add a filter on it. Let me take you to incident table first. Okay, so we are on incident table. Now over here on incident table, if the requirement is if the category is hardware or software or database, whatever the categories, print those numbers. So what we can do, we can choose here filter. Category is software or category is hardware or category is database. If I run this, we have how many records? We have 25 records available. Same concept we will apply on our scripting. So let's go back to the fix script over here. And instead of add query, or if you can use like this also, x dot add query. Again, category is hardware and so on, so on and so forth. So to avoid these things multiple times, ServiceNow has given this option to us that is called add encoded query. What is this encoded query? So to explain you this, we we'll go back to our ServiceNow filter over here. This is the filter which we have applied. Right click on the filter and you have this option called copy query. So basically, once you copy the query from the filter, you can use directly on the encoded. It will become, it will come like this. See, category equal to software or category equal to hardware or category equal to database. So best option is guys, always go with, sorry, control set, control Y, Y. Always go with encoded query. That is my personal opinion because you can have multiple Filters available in service now. Whatever the filter you will apply, just go and apply the filter, copy it from there, right click and copy and apply on your script section. Now, once you do this, let me remove on this. Yeah. If I save it, so this button is available, or you can see that the floppy disk kind of a button is available. This is also used to save your code, or you can right click on the top and save it. Any of the way is fine. Now, if I run this script, you will get three options, guys. First is cancel. Second one is proceed. And third one is proceed in background. If I click on proceed, I will get the details right away. I think I have selected state. Instead of state, let me choose number. Yeah. Save it. Yep. See? can see list of all 25 numbers are available in front of my screen. Now the same thing if I go ahead and click on this option proceed in background. So what you have to do is if you click on this, a window will come and will tell you that okay you go and do your work. The code will be running in the background. So where you will find the running code come down you have this option called show progress workers. If I click on this it will show me the need code which was run just now. So if I open this, now here is the list of all the numbers which, which ran, which ran. Or you can come down. This is the one. Let me just click on update it. Yeah. Got it just now. 
I think it's, these are the numbers which has run. So you can choose any of the option. There's an option called progress workers. If I go back, you can do the same stuff. This is one of the requirements which we have achieved. Now, instead of number, I want caller. So whoever the caller is, so where is the caller? So we don't have caller over, yeah, we have caller over here. I want caller details. So instead of call x dot number, we use caller. And what is the backend name of caller? So let's open any particular record and see the backend name of caller because ServiceNow will always take the backend name, not the label. Whatever you see over here, these are labels. These are labels. Whatever you don't see, that is present on the backend, that is called you caller ID. Backend name is caller ID. So I will use here caller underscore ID. Guys, focus over here. You will notice once I run this code, let me save it. I can save it from here also. I can save it from here also. Once I run this code, you will notice I will not get the caller name. See, click on run script. Click on proceed. You got the ID. What is this ID? These are 32 digit unique ID given to all the records. So this is nothing but a 32 digit unique ID. So these unique ID, why we are getting the unique ID instead of name? Here we have name, you see, here we have Alexander, Joy, Fred, Don. Why the name are not showing? The reason is, always remember when a field is a reference. Let me open this record and you will notice caller is a reference field. Whenever you try to access any reference field from form or from any table, it will always give you the sys ID of that caller or sys ID of that record. So joy employee, if you click here, it is giving me the joy employee sys ID. So if I click here and if I want first name, I will do a dot work. As I explained you in the last class, what is dot work? So you can go inside any record with the help of an object, which we have already created, which is nothing but called X over here, X dot caller ID. And now I want to know the name. So I will use X dot caller ID dot name. Because caller is a reference field, so this double dot walking is only applicable to the reference field. You see here, caller is a reference field because if I click here, it will take me to the user table. So we are staying on the incident table, but we are going to the user table. So this field is called a reference field. Now, if you want to access any reference field data, guys, always remember this is going to give you a sys ID, not the record name. In this case, click on I and see. What details you want? Let's say I want email. I will use caller underscore id dot email dot notification dot time zone dot date format. Whatever I want, I can use it. So caller dot name, caller dot name. If I use and save it, now if I run my script, you will notice it has given me the exact answer which we are looking for. Proceed. See, David, Fred, Don, Rick, 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 correct. This is one of the way which you can display. The sys ID into name. Remember that. Now we we'll see these options also. Let me just open my snipping tool. What are all this? So basically, if you see this over here, this is nothing but syntax check. If you click on this, this will be grayed out. It will not give show you the suggestion box and all that. So always remember this is checked. Okay. Now this option is nothing but comment out. We have to like this. X here and this and this over here. It is not looking good. Proper indentation is not there. If you want to rearrange this, select all and click on this option format code and we come to the come back to the previous one. This one is this one is called format code. Now this one is called replace. Let's say I want to replace number with something else. I will click here. Replace numbers with capital number. Okay, enter. Yes, number is replaced with number. Can you see? So these are the boxes called replace, replace all. You can find, let's say you want to find number. Click on, let's say you want, you want to find callers, E-E-L-L-E-R. It will highlight that. If we have more than one caller, you can go back from first drop down one, two, three, four, whatever you want, you can do it. This particular box is nothing but called full script. You can go back to the full script over here. This is called help. 
So if you have any shortcut to take the help, you can use this option. And the last option is your save. And this is nothing but your syntax check. If there any semicolon mistake, I am getting an error. If you see warning sign like this, if I uncheck this, it will not check the syntax. See, if I check this, it will check the syntax. If I uncheck this, it will not check the syntax. And this is nothing but called debugger. Is this part I will talk about later in this particular scripting series. So I hope you are able to understand what basically dot walking objects are doing. Let's create another requirement. So what I want is, let me delete this from scratch. We will write again. Now my requirement is requirement number two. Requirement number two. If incident state is closed, or let's say resolved. Let's say closed only. And category of closed incident is software. Then update the short description description. Now the requirement is if any category called software and that software category incident is closed, then I have to update the short description. So how we can achieve this kind of a scenario? Guys, always remember whenever the state is closed, we have a software. If I open this, you will notice we cannot do any changes in the software. If we will not be allowed to do any changes. The reason is when the incident is closed, you have to create another incident. You cannot reopen this existing incident. If you have not seen my incident problem and change video, you can go back and change the life cycle of it. This is a life cycle over here. Now, if your manager wants to update the sort description, how you are going to update it? So here comes the scripting. So we'll fix this issue with the help of fixed script. So we will go back to our fixed script. And first of all, we will we have to go to the incident table. So what should I write? Glide record. Let me make it capital. Yeah. Guide record of incident simple first now i have to assign it to a variable so what i will do variable x equal to now i have to go inside the incident and i have to access everything so i have to create an object with a word called new so this the entire details i have told you in my previous video you can go back and check that you can find the video in the description enter now what i have to check go back to the requirement if the state is closed and the category is software, okay. First of all, to achieve this, we have to apply a filter. Obviously, if you write a SQL query, what you will write? Uh, select start from incident where state equal to close and category equal to software. Correct? We used to write like this in SQL. Similarly, here we have to apply the filter. We'll go to the incident table. We will apply a filter by clicking on this filter icon. Close everything and I will type here when the state and the state is closed and when the category is software run this so we have four records we have four records with different sort description let add one more priority is critical now guys you can click on the filter and add the priority but there's shortcut also just hover your cursor over here right click and do show matching once you do show matching it will auto apply to the filter see we have only two reports how i did so we'll we went to the option over here right click and show matching let's say again i'm showing you i want a caller call only rick so i will right click and do a show matching that's it so we want this caller if you don't want this caller you can right click and do a filter out filter out is nothing but not equal to if i click on filter out it will show me see caller not equal to. obviously the caller is already selected i will click here now once you're done with this right click and copy the query once you copy the query go back to your scripting and type x dot add encoded query remember encoded 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 means whatever the 
query code they have given you over here. It's encoded in the filter. That's why the name is called encoded query. So copy query if you do and just write add encoded query bracket because you have to put encoded query in the bracket only. In the bracket, you have query and a string. Whatever the query you have copied, that should be in double quotes or single quotes. Done. So close category software priority one caller is nothing but the caller society, which is nothing but Rick, which is here. Now I will run the query to run the query. What we use X dot query and this is not nothing but call method. So we have to apply a bracket X dot query inside that we have to apply a bracket. Now we have only one record guys over here, only one. So instead of if, instead of while we use if. So if x dot next, correct? This is all we have seen. So remember this four line will remain same till you are in service now career. Only the table name, filter condition, query condition will change, but this line will remain same. Now what we have to do, we have to update the sort description. So first of all, we have to know what is the, what is sort description? How we can go to the sort description? So in service now, we have created an object X and now X can access everything. It means that X can access sort description also. Means X can access this also. X dot sort description. What is the back end name of sort description? Short underscore description. If I go back and here if I type X dot short underscore description equal to let's say uh, the ticket is closed place re revisit service now website or let's say revisit service now service portal to raise an incident. Simple, correct? So X dot sort description. Now, this I have hard coding it. I am setting this value, but it will not set guys until you will update it. So how to update this? As I mentioned here in my uh, notes over here, we can perform these operations. So I am going to perform this operation called update. So how to update it? We have a command called update. So if I use X dot update see it will update the record and if you want to know which records are updated just type here gs.print and mention like the incident which are updated is plus where is incident in x so x dot number done my coding is done trust me guys these codes are not hard you just have to try for first time i have not done any fancy code guys i have not used any javascript kind of a stuff till now but still we are able to code it if i save it now we will run the script so i'm going to run this particular script click on run proceed and you will notice I will get a message over here. The incident number which are updated is 34. So do we have a 34? Yes, 34. If I refresh the page, will it get updated? Let me see. Yes, guys, see the ticket is closed. Please revisit service now. Service is important with the incident. Now, if I open this, now I cannot change it because this has been updated by script C. It's got a grayed out. So this is one of the requirements which you will be doing when you will be part of any organization. This is one of the use case and the real time scenario which I am telling you. This is one way which you can update it. The update command is called x dot update. Clear? I hope you are clear on this. So same kind of a script server side we can use in different kind of a server side of a scripting like background script. If I copy this for example and there's another place where we can write the same kind of a script called background script. Background script. Once I open this, see this is my server. You can notice here run server Java script executed on server. You will notice it is really very blank. Very blank. You cannot find any kind of an intelligence box also. For example, if I do x dot 
x dot nothing is appearing correct so this kind of a black environment over here this is nothing but call your background strip guys there's a difference between background and the fixed script i will tell you so background and the fixed script both are both uses server side the only difference is fixed script get captured in update set update set but background script will never gonna capture in update set never gonna capture in update set remember that that's why people mostly use fixed script but we as a developer will write our code over here and we will try to uh, get some details we want a script right away to run over here we click on this option run and it will give me that incident 34 has been updated for example it updates it so at at the last let me give add the date okay and click on run script so it will update it will do the same stuff see if i stress the page at the rate both are same the only difference is here in the fixed script if i click on run it will ask me at least for the confirmation warning you are about to update delete or something correct still we can view the code but over here if i run it it will not give any warning at, at all it will run it so it it is dangerous to use background script what if if you, if you have deleted something for example let's say you have deleted something what will happen then the record got deleted and who will be responsible you are the one who is responsible but if you delete any record via fixed script you have this option that okay we are deleting something you can go back and check it you can click on cancel right but here do we have a cancel option no we don't have so how we can recover all those so we have that option to recover it but that i will tell you at uh, after creating multiple scenarios but remember background script and fixed script both are same in terms of execution the only difference is they are not getting background script is not getting captured update set fixed script is getting captured update set and background script is a choice of developers where they want to use it for checking whether their code is working or not so you don't use update delete or create statement in background script don't use you can use print if you use print nothing will happen it will only print it it will not update obviously but if you use update then it will update the record i hope you are able to understand from this concept what is the meaning of background and what is the meaning of fixed script so glide record basically it will take you to the table table which you have mentioned and it will perform certain activity so this particular feature i am going to use in other kind of a business rule other kind of a uh, server side like business rule schedule job workflow script and we'll see much more scenario the next scenario which i am going to tell you is let me write it down okay let me put it over here the next scenario is requirement we if category is inquiry category is inquiry set the description field with incident number and the caller current caller id a current caller name now guys there is a most asked interview question how to get the current logged in user okay let me write it down here also req code how to get the current logged in user in service now through server side script server side of scripting how we can do that so basically remember guys to get the current logged in user through server side let me remove it we have that option called glide system you remember when we did on the first day of scripting we use gs here also we are using gs.print so gs.print is nothing but a global variable that is given by service now if you use just gs.print gs. if you do and just type 
get user you will notice we have this option we can get the user we can get the display name of the user we can get the user id we can get the username and these are nothing but the current logged in user guys you are getting this kind of a window only in utah you might not get this but if i show you a lower version of it you will not get this kind of a window you will get a simple window so if i use gs.get user let's say username so what it will give me it will give me always the current logged in user so when the interviewer will ask you this question how to fetch the current logged in user in server side please go ahead and tell them that we have an object called gs or we have a global variable called gs called glide system that will allow us to get the current logged in trust me this answer is enough and what is gs gs is nothing but glide system glide system means a global variable which is defined by service now that will take me to the uh, you can say that uh, service now page documentation and where you can read about it what is called gs let me show you right click show documentation once you open it see gs is an api which refer to a variable called gs which is used in server side in javascript so gs is basically used in server side of a scripting and basically with the help of gs you can print anything you can get a current logged in user so like this gs dot get user name okay and let me store in a variable so variable user name equal to enter and just print it gs dot print that's it guys so if the interviewer, interviewer will ask you this question how to get the current logged in user details from server side what you guys have to explain them we have a global variable called gs with the help of gs.getUserID we will get the current logged in user if i copy this for example and let me go to the background script paste it run this we got the current logged in user as admin who is admin i am the admin system admin Correct. So to get the current logged in user, we can use gs dot get username, user ID, and user sessions. Lot of things are there, guys. You want to use gs? Go for it. Gs with the help of gs. What else you can perform? You can get add a message on the top like this error message. A lot of scripts are there. No need of going there. Add info message on the top. You can find the beginning of last one. So all of this, you can explore this documentation if you want. I will go ahead and teach you everything, but sequence wise. So how to get current logged in user with the help of gs.getUserName. The last requirement is get the categories inquiry, set the description field with incident number and current caller name. Okay, great. So first of all, to do this, we have to go to the incident table. So how to go? The variable x equal to new slide record incident i hope this line is clear if you don't know if you're not clear on this line do comment in the comment section and i will explain you again and again once you are clear on it then it will be i will be more than happy to explain you x dot add what should i use x dot add encoded query encoded what happens loading no problem let me delete this x dot add encoded query and inside the encoded query what should, what should i use so i should use categories inquiry okay so let's go back to the incident table uh, click on filter delete everything when the category is inquiry and run it so we have 37 so i don't want to update 37 obviously uh, what i should do let's say if priority is critical so show matching and uh, let's say ticket is in progress so matching so this is the requirement if the ticket is in progress and the priority is critical and category is inquiry then you set the description field obviously we'll use this x dot query to run the script so we have more than how many records we have more than one record so what should i use you can pause the video and tell me what should I use here. 
we will use while instead of if we use while while x dot next see i am using the same four line always now here what should i set i have to set the description field with incident number first of all to set the description field with incident number we should know what is the current incident number or we can get it obviously we will get it with the help of x so we have this option called x dot get value get value is a method which will allow you to get the value of any field for example if i go to this incident 31 okay now if i want to get this number so what i should use get value either you can get the value or set the value i mentioned correct similarly over here you can get the value with the help of x dot because x is an object to incident table x dot number get value of number so what is the back end name of number a small number go back and here type get get the value and bracket of number that's it and i will assign this to equal to description x dot description clear i hope you are clear on this that's it guys and now i will do x dot update that will update it now again i want one more thing guys what is that current color so how to get the current color with the help of gs dot get user id so i will concatenate number with the name so we will use what sign plus sign this we have seen in the previous video so plus give one space so i will give a space like this again concatenate plus gs dot get user uh username that's it control a format your code my work is done i am saving it and run this script proceed go to the incident details refresh here you will notice description is incident number 31 and the name is admin i hope you are clear guys on this so thank you so much we'll come back with the more scenarios in the next session and we'll start with the business rule in the next session if you have any doubt do let me know i will have more scenarios so the scripting series will be very long we'll cover all the possible scenarios and all the life scenarios going forward so thank you so much and we'll meet in the next session till then keep watching keep learning and keep helping